Hey, we got some football to watch on Saturday. How about that? Uh, here in April, it's the Clemson Spring Game leading off the major powers in terms of those TV appearances that we have throughout April. We got Jason Priester on the line from allclemson.com. You check out his work right there on the SI platform for Clemson football. Jason, how are we doing today? I'm doing pretty good today, man. How about you? I am doing just fine. And I got to say, that I get excited for spring football. I get excited for these spring games, and I see the big list of, yeah, Michigan's going to be on here, and Alabama and Clemson and Ohio State and all these teams are going to be on, and wow, isn't it going to be great? All these games are on. And then I flip on a spring game, and it takes about three or four plays before I realize, <laughs> yeah, this really isn't football. Yeah. <laughs> now, it, it, it's nothing more than a glorified scrimmage, man. But Hey, it, it's still football, though. Still it is, football. It's, it's still from football. And actually, if the TV network does it correctly, I enjoy it because I think in recent years they've realized, okay, we can't broadcast these things like a football game. They used to. You used to watch a spring game, and it was almost like watching a regular football game. That's the way they'd call the game. And now they realize, okay, we need to get down on the field. We talk to the coaches. We talk to players. You know, We, we present different storylines and different things that are going on in, in, in the spring concerning the program. And they present it like a TV show in terms of you get to understand a little bit more of what's going on with the program and the team than just, you know, he just ran for a five yard, you know, off tackle. And then he just, you know, that that's really not that consequential at the time. So I've enjoyed what they've done. And certainly I would expect they'll do the same on, uh, it's going to be the uh, ACC network tomorrow. Yeah. ACC network. That is correct. And, and you're right, man, that the way these, the, the networks are doing these spring games now you know it, there's a lot more insight when they're down there talking to the coaches you, you, you get a better feel of what's going on instead of just sitting there feeling like you're watching like i said a glorified scrimmage you know you, you get more of a feel of what's going on inside of the game I, I think they've really done a lot better job of presenting these spring games in recent years I, i'm totally on board with that it's a player that moved from wide receiver to cornerback uh, a couple of years ago. Was that Darion Kendrick? Correct. Darion yeah. Kendrick. Uh, he comes to mind. Uh, I remember Dabo really going in depth in terms of what he had to learn going to that side of the ball, and yep. it was a natural fit, and it was really good to hear things like that when they presented like that. Last year, or it might have been the year before, probably the year before, I remember him really detailing Frank Ladson and Joseph Nagata, how well they were coached in high school, that they came into spring ball really knowing much more than your typical wide receiver would know, stepping right off high school campus. And, and just hearing those sites, so, sorts of bits of information and insight are great. Yeah, um, that was a year before last. Cause matter of fact, Clemson didn't have one last year, so it had yeah. to be a year before last. But, yeah, um, yeah I think we're going to get a lot more of that tomorrow, too, you know, with guys like, Phil Moffa, Will Shipley, the two freshman receivers, you know, Bo Collins, Dakari Collins, um, no relation there. But th those guys have been very well coached in high school, come from good good high school programs, All I think all winning programs. So they're used to winning. Those guys are winners. I, I think we'll hear a lot of the similar stories about those guys tomorrow. So what are you looking to see out of this? There, there's, you know, one of the big things about spring games to me is if, I think there's a lot of overreactions after they after they're over. Fans like to overreact to what they see, but there's still a lot I think you can learn from spring games. You know, like for instance with Clemson, I think one of the biggest questions going into the season is going to be how much improvement they've made along the offensive line. That that to me was their biggest weakness last year. The the, the offensive line just could not run block, and Travis Etienne's numbers dipped dramatically because of that especially blocking on the interior between the tackles and that kind of stuff. It, the run game was just not there last year. Those guys have to be better. They've got all – the way they got the rosters divided up tomorrow, all the starting offensive linemen except for one are on one team, but one's not going to play. So that will put three on one team and one on another. So I think there's, there's going to be some things we can learn from about how, how much improvement this offensive line's made from – over this um, spring, I think they they really not having a full spring and summer on campus last year. I think really hurt that group. That that there was some young guys who could have really benefited from being in the weight room all spring, all summer long, and, and 
they didn't get to develop that cohesiveness, you know, because Clemson was play, replacing four starters along the offensive line. So I, I think it's going to – I think we're definitely going to see some improvement this year. I think being back on campus is going to be a major, major positive for them. Um, I think that's one thing to keep an eye on tomorrow is how well the offensive line plays and can they protect the quarterback and, and how good the running game is. Yeah, it seems like a good approach to get those three offensive linemen together. They have to work together as the ones. Um, maybe it wouldn't be a good idea to put all the ones on the defensive line together against them. I, I don't know if that would be very fair, but uh, hey, it would probably be, well, I'm going to say the best defensive front they're going to face this year, so they might as well see them in spring ball. They see them every day, so. Yeah, oddly enough, DJ Uinga Lalele, or God, I trip over myself every time I say it. He's playing on the team with only one starting offensive lineman. So we'll see how that works out, man. And it's going to be interesting to watch, you know, if they can protect him, give him time to read the field and throw the ball. Because, you know, Clemson's got, they got a lot of playmakers at wide receiver. There should be plays to be made if he's got time to throw the ball, no doubt. So if there are some college football fans out there that are starving to watch football, they're going to be watching this game. It's going to be a lot more than just Clemson fans watching this game because they want to get a read on one of the best programs in the country. Uh, so so who would you point them to on both sides of the ball in terms of, you know, maybe beyond the stars that, uh, man, these are some key guys. Maybe they haven't seen a ton of reps in the past, but they need to step up and let's see what they got. Um, Another position group to watch is, is – running back because Clemson's got a deep stable of, you know, and some talented running backs. And two of them are true freshmen, Phil Moffa, Will Shipley. Shipley's a former five-star. I, I think Moffa was probably, I think moffa has got a very high ceiling too. I think not having the camps and stuff last year probably caused him to be a little underrated. I, I think he's going to be really good. I think both of those guys have chances to get on the field this year. It'll, it'll, all come down to how quickly they can learn the pass protections and that stuff because this coaching staff does not put running backs on the field. They do not trust to protect their quarterback. If you don't know the pass protections, you're not going to play a lot as a running back. But, but as far as tomorrow, those guys, I, I expect those two guys to get a lot of carries in this game tomorrow, and I, I think they'll probably put on a show. Um, I know in the scrimmage right before spring break, Dabo Sweeney was thoroughly impressed with how well the team ran the ball and all those running backs. Um, couple receivers to keep an eye on you might not have heard of yet. I mentioned earlier Bo Collins, Dakari Collins. They got a rising sophomore, E.J. Williams, who was starting to really come on down the stretch after Clemson's receiver room was pretty ravaged by injury last season. Um, he's put on, I think at least, I think he's put on about 12 pounds of bulk. Um, I, I, I think that he is going to be a monster this season. He's, he's going to be, he's going to be hard to cover. He, 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 he looked a little, he looked a little true freshman this last season, if that makes any sense. You know, they come in kind of looking like they still need a, a year in the weight room, but he, he's added some bulk, and I think it's really going to help him. On the defensive side, one of the guys that I would really watch is cornerback Nathaniel Wiggins. Clemson is very, very slim at quarterback. They've got six scholarship corners right now and, and that that's not a lot two of them aren't going to be playing tomorrow so they're only going to have four cornerbacks two on each team they're going to have to both go all the way i guess but um nathaniel wiggins is a true freshman and brent venable said it the other day that that they are he is going to have to play this year they are going to have to rely on him at times and if somebody gets hurt they're going to have to rely on him a lot so depending on how much he is how well he's progressed, where he at, where he's at in his development, I think it go a long ways towards deciding whether or not this coaching staff decides to finally dip into the transfer portal after the spring and, and see if they can't find another body at corner. Because going into the season with six corners and one of them being a true freshman that you're that you don't fully trust yet, that that's not ideal at all. So Nathaniel Wiggins is is the is a guy on defense I watch, and another one is linebacker Levante Bentley. Um, Clemson's two starting linebackers on the inside are out. James Skowski's not taking live reps this year. He's a six-year guy. He, he, he's been there, done that. So they're giving the, all the reps to the younger guys. Baylon Spector's out recovering from the injury. So 
the younger linebackers are going to get to play. And, and Bentley's a guy going into his third year, and he was very highly touted coming out of high school. And it's just taking him a little bit longer to get on the field. Clemson's pretty deep at linebacker. I mean, they got a very deep linebacker room. And with Skowski coming back for a sixth year, Specter coming back for a fifth year, you know, those guys are just going to have to be patient. But um, I really like this Bentley kid. He, he got on the field for like 73 snaps last year. He made the most out of those limited opportunities, too. He, he had four and a half tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, I think. Um, he, he's a hard-hitting, thumping linebacker. Um, I, I think he's got a bright future if he can ever get get on the field. You know, it's, it's so crowded in that linebacker room there at Clemson. Jason, I got a list of questions for you post-spring game. So once you take in the spring game, you know – what happened during the spring practice and then get a look uh, on the spring game. Uh, I think it's a little bit more fair to, to pose some of these questions regarding, you know, for example, you know, what would you expect the running back distribution to be, you know, your typical game, who's going to get how many carries that sort of thing on down the line, but we'll have you take in the spring game and uh, we'll hit you up with some of these questions in the next couple months. Sounds like a plan, man. All right, I'm going to take in the spring game, then I'm going to go live after the spring game. So that's, uh, what, two, two-and-a-half-hour game. I should be on here about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon on Saturday uh, following the Clemson spring game. Uh, Jason, are you going to make it there? Where are you going to watch it? Just watch it home? I will be at home. All right. Yeah. Enjoy I, I was that. supposed to go, but I'm going to be at home, turns out. Hey, <laughs> Kick back and enjoy it. That's what I'm going to do, and uh, I'm going to be live after it. If you've got five or ten minutes and want to jump on, uh, certainly you uh, are always welcome. Okay, man. I'll see what I can do. All right, Jason. Have a good one. We appreciate hey, it. Appreciate it, man.